Yo, this is Pastor Tito here welcoming you to another episode of my revolutionary podcast where I'm here to help you find faith in Christ and how to follow through with your life. And this is one of my deep dives that I'm doing for the year 2021 as I'm kind of reflecting a little uh, personally on some of the things that God did in my life, uh, things that kind of hearing feedback from our church on the sermon, on what God is doing them, how they responded, uh, how it hit them. And uh, at the same time, there was just, you know, just time that I, I just didn't have time to share certain things uh, that I kind of wanted to make sure I did. And so uh, the number one thing that I wanted to remind you guys is really the purpose of the whole message, which was circled around the Great Commission. All right. This was Jesus's ascension, his final last words right before he tells his apostles, all dozen of them, to them like, all right, guys, it's time to get busy. All right. It's time to go and do. And I'm always uh, just amazed at that story. I'm always amazed at that, that Jesus himself would say, go ahead and do it. And, and without, you know, the fear, just the, the empowerment there. I mean, just look at that as just leadership, you know, number one, uh, leadership in Jesus, right? And how, what he does, he doesn't go and does it, you know, do it for everybody. You know, he's not going to go out there and just carry the team on his back. Well, which he did on the cross. Let's so be real. Um, but he invites, he empowers, he decentralizes the mission to bring people alongside of it, to empower them. And that was a key thing, right? He's he's not putting it on the apostles on now their backs. It's like, all right, it's going to rise and fail on your best efforts. No, it's on the Holy Spirit. And that's one of the coolest things that they began to, you know, they, they learned, they understood because they did it. You know, those 12 guys and the do and the dozens and dozens of disciples, men, women, young and old that made up the early church. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, they defied all odds in doing what they did. It was because it was the Holy Spirit who did it. And uh, and that's actually one of the things that uh, still baffles scholars, especially non-Christian scholars, secular scholars are like, there is there's no reason like it does not make sense that the early church, Jesus's followers were able to do what they did and how, you know, two over two thousand years later, it's literally changed the world in, in regarding, I mean, up and down, you know, spiritually, culturally. I mean, so many things you you cannot look at one area of life and still not see the legacy, the Christian legacy that that is there. And they're like, they defied all the odds. It makes no sense that they did it without an army, without the kind of, you know, funding. Again, they had everything stacked against them and they did it. How did they do it? It was it wasn't them. It was the Holy Spirit in them. And honestly, guys, their story, just like the Old Testament, is supposed to inspire us to see, look at what God did. Look at how these people, by faith, all they did was trust in God and look what God did. And that inspired the New Testament believers, the, the early church. And now we have both. You know, we have the Old Testament stories of what God did in their faithfulness. And we have the New Testament stories of what God did and, and their faithfulness and God's faithfulness through them to point and remind us to say, yep, same Old Testament God, New Testament God. That's the same God for today. And that if we act on faith... God will do big things through us too, you know? And I, I never, as I was prepping the message and I was really shocked and hit by the idea of the placement of Acts, you know, like obviously it makes sense why Acts go after the gospels. You know, the gospels is telling the life of story of Jesus. And then Acts is the life and story of the young church, the early church, the, how it all started. The gospels talk about how the kingdom came into this world and the New Testament, well, not the New Testament, the book of Acts talks about the expansion of that kingdom, the early expansion that's, that conti still continues to this day. And it hit me to see, wow, not only is the progression logical, but it's also spiritual in the sense that faith comes by believing in what God has done. It's always, the gospel is always God first. It's always done, the gospels, and then now go do 
the book of Acts. And that's us. That's, that's, that sequence is the same for us. When we believe and put our trust and confidence in all that Christ has done, knowing what Jesus has done should influence what we do. And again, it's not us because yes, the book of Acts, it does say it's the acts of the apostles, but we all know we've seen it. It's the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles and disciples and early church. It's the act of God. God did some amazing things, you know, in the gospels. And then man, look at what he did in those 30 years. And it was really cool as we were talking about being a witness, right? And, you know, that's kind of what Jesus told them. And the same word comes for us as his church. That challenge, that command, the Great Commission echoes into every generation. It is our calling too. Jesus is calling us to say, now you go and do in your Jerusalem, in your context, in your Judea, in your nation, and to your Samaria, you know, to those that disagree with you, don't look like you, act like you, you know, those that you're not supposed to talk to, the, the ones that you least think deserve to be saved. Yeah, God loves them too. And then the nations, meaning there's no one that's off limits to this limitless love. Um, and so being a witness, it was, I was really impacted and reflected by Luke. You know, Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, also wrote the book of Acts. Luke was a doctor. You know, we don't know of any miracle that Luke did as a disciple of Jesus. I mean, wh what, did, what did Luke do? Do we know of anybody that he rose from the dead? Did anybody that he prayed for and got healed? Anybody, do we know anything of that? Do we know uh, just how many people did Luke lead to Jesus? We don't know that. Could he have done it? Of course. Do we know? I don't know. But what's amazing about even Luke's story is that Luke's testimony, Luke is bearing witness right now. He interviewed eyewitnesses and now his testimony to the truth. The fact that he, what he wrote has stood the test of time through the Holy Spirit. His book stands as witness. How many people have come to believe in Jesus because of the gospel of Luke? How many people have found hope in Jesus and a new life because of what the words that the Holy Spirit inspired him to write down and the work that he did? And so it's amazing to see that uh, just we, sh we shouldn't put a limit. I mean, we shouldn't put a limit on what God can do through our words, through our actions, through our social media posts. Like we are just called to be a witness in our context. That's it. Telling people about who Jesus is, what he's done for us. And, and notice that this isn't passive, right? Because the apostles are like, all right, Jesus, uh, are you going to do it now? Is now the time? Are you going to do it? You, you, you going to do it? And you're like, no, no, no. You got something to do, too, in the meantime. You got something to do in the meantime. And guys, I, I want you to know that, that the mission, the mission of the gospel, the mission of the Great Commission is one that is in motion. Okay? The mission is one that is in motion. You know, the church needs to be in motion 24 days, 7 days a week in this great commission. The Great Commission isn't just invite somebody to church and hopefully a pastor can lead them to Jesus. That's not the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to go, bear witness, tell others Tell others, like I said on Sunday, all you need to tell people is why you believe. What is your truth? Why did you choose to believe in Jesus? Why do you still, why do you act the way that you do? Number one. And then the other one is the way you live can be a witness. Because listen, it's one thing for you to say, I believe in Jesus. And it's another thing for your behavior not to match what you say you believe. Your words are bearing witness, but we are also standing witness to your behavior and something looks sus. All right. It don't look right. It don't look right. OK, I, I sense an imposter in the house. Um, listen, the Great Commission should lead you to motion. OK, the mission is one of motion and it is one of motion towards God, towards Christ as we are pursuing him more. But then it is also a motion towards those who don't believe and bringing Christ to them, bringing the truth to them. And it is not your responsibility for someone to be saved. It is your responsibility to tell the truth. I mean, you need to be a truth teller, okay? It is your responsibility to tell the truth of what Jesus is, who he is, what he did, and the fact that we are all sinners in need of a savior, okay? That's your act of faith, and you do it in an act of faith, and, and that's the crazy part, man, because I know it sounds weird. I'm, I'm thinking about it even on stage and as I'm sharing everything. It's like, <laughs> you're going to be God. These pe people are going to be saved by me telling them, me telling them that they're not as special as they think they are. Not to say that 
they're horrible. You know, obviously, God, you love them, but they're not as special as they think they are. The situation is worse than they could ever imagine. And you want me to call them out so they can call on you. You want me to tell them that they're sinners. Obviously, guys, who's going to call on a savior if they don't feel they need saving? That's the truth to it. But it was interesting. And so basically that right there, it defies logic. I, I read in one of my books recently that when, when Christianity, when the gospel and when the truth of Christianity makes sense, it's not common sense. When it makes sense, it is not common sense. That's what makes it a miracle. That's what makes it an act of God. When we act on faith and by faith, we will see an act of God. We will see God do things miraculously. Now, let me tell you, and I was thinking about this too, and I've learned, and this has encouraged me to be even bolder in my witness, bolder in my conversations, bolder in my life, is first off, you never know who's watching. You never know who's looking. There are people that know you're a Christian and they're watching the way you live. And your actions are speaking a thousand words or more, okay? And you never know. You never know who's watching. You never know who's noticing. And so take that to heart because you know what? When that person's really going through it, who are they going to come to? I need need to talk to you, man, because you've been talking about this. And you know what? You look real. You look like you really mean it and you really believe it. Can you help me understand it? Can you help me? What is it that you have? See, number one, you never know what you never know what people are who's watching. Number one. And number two is you never know the words, the impact that could have ultimately, because maybe you telling somebody about Jesus. OK, that's they're not going to get saved. Let's say if for this person, it's not going to get saved because you know what you did, though? You didn't you didn't reap anything. You just sowed a seed. When you tell somebody the gospel, if they're it's you're either reaping you're I'm sorry, I'm going to start better. If you tell people the gospel, you're either sowing a seed, watering that seed or reaping that seed, uh, reaping then the harvest. That's it. You, you, you are going to do one of the three things Though God's word will fulfill itself in one of those three ways. God will use you to maybe plant a seed and that somebody else will go and through their love and character and the truth that they will speak will water that seed. And then maybe finally it'll get to a point that somebody else is going to reap the harvest and save that person. And that's okay, guys. We're all on the same team. Everybody does this. Everybody has a role and a part. Okay, we all do. Okay, you, you got the person, let's just imagine football right here. I live in Tampa, so this week that I'm recording this on the second week of February, it's been, up, well, now I guess third, almost third week of February, it's been a great week for Tampa football because the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl this year, this week and this year. And so think about it. You got somebody got to hike the ball to the quarterback, and the quarterback then got to hand it off to a running back, and the linemen got to put some defensive players on their backs in order for the running back to hit the hole and score whatever, right? Everybody has a job. The, you know, the running back scored a touchdown. Yes, let's just say in this, my analogy, the running back scored a touchdown, but the running back wouldn't have scored if the snapper wouldn't have handed the ball off properly, if then the quarterback wouldn't have handed the ball off properly, and, it properly, and, and if the offensive linemen didn't do their job. Everybody and the whole team scores a touchdown at that point. It's not that person, unless you're playing fantasy, but it's not that person only. It's a team. The team scores a touchdown. Everybody plays a role. So I want to challenge you guys. Don't be ashamed. Like, oh, well, what if they don't get saved? Well, you know what? What if they don't get saved later on because you didn't plant that seed right now? Like, it's okay. Plant that seed and let trust in God to do the work. He'll do the work, and that's important. And but in order though, I want to encourage you guys. If in being, if especially you're a believer in Christ, listen, it's our, it's our duty to be stewards of God's word. It's important for us to be studious, being a disciple, being disciplined in the word of God. It's important for us to tackle the hard questions, like go in and see what we know that these are objections that people have objections about the Bible. It's a good thing that we learn. It's a good thing that we listen. Um, in the end, you're only, you're only called to defend why you believe what you believe. And, and the truth of the matter is this, that as believers in Christ, you and I can only defend the truth to the level that we are defined by it. And, and I want to be real with you on that. You and I, as, but now I'm talking to believers now, you and I can only defend the truth of God to the level that we are defined by the truth of God, marked by the power of the gospel. That is what we're called to defend. That's what we're called to defend. 
defend why we believe. We can defend the truth when we are defined by it more and more. And that matters. That matters. And so uh, it just encourages us to dive in a little bit better. I know the way I preach, it's, you know, for some, maybe it's not the sexiest. Uh, For some, it's maybe not the, you know, the most hype all the time. But I want to make sure because you know, that we, we got some great preachers out there. So I'm not trying to copy anybody else. You know, I'm just trying to find my lane and find my role. That's it. And I want to be able to preach in the kind of way that that, man, it, it makes you appreciate. It makes you look at God's word a little bit more as you see the wrinkles and the details and the nooks and the crannies on how it. I mean, there's so much like I, I want to kind of give you a, a taste, a sample of the buffet that is God's word every Sunday and just making you hoping and believing that God's going to put a greater hunger in you just to go for it yourself. And so that matters. But guys, being if in order to defend the truth and be a witness to Christ, we need to be defined, marked by God, marked by an encounter with God. And, and the truth is that if we are, the, you know, we all can be a witness at that case. It's, it's not as difficult. And I confessed on Sunday that I, I would make it more difficult than it was. Like I made it more complicated. I thought that if I didn't witness properly, you know, it's like I put it all on me. Let's just be real. I, it was all on my ability, my creativity or my eloquency. Okay. That was all. On, I was putting it all on me to try to save somebody. And I cared more about someone accepting me than them really accepting Christ. And I hate to shame that, but uh, I, I am ashamed to admit that. Whatever. But that's real though. And the thing is that it's actually a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot easier than we think. I mean, if you think about it, and I'm going to kind of end with this. It's as easy as just so many things that we do. Because the, the gospel, the bottom line, the gospel was... You know, you spread the gospel the same way you spread gossip. You just tell somebody when, when you have, you know, uh, you watch a great movie. Yo, hey, let me let me put you on that movie real quick. Right. Let, let, let me help you. Let me. Oh, you, you don't know what to watch, bro. Check this out. Let me put you on that. You, you go and have a great meal somewhere. You're going to tell somebody you're going to post something about it. Hey, go there. Yo, don't go there. Right. In the same way, in the same way, we ought to be as vocal about, listen, I came to Christ. I, I put my trust and confidence in him. And this is what he did in my life, bro. Let me put you on some Jesus. You need to go this way. You need to check him out. You need to reconsider, right? This is, this has made the difference maker in my life. I don't know how many times we buy products and it changes our lives. And we, we become the, the number one people out there, right? Uh, the, the one that I see that, you know, everybody on Twitter loves to make fun of the most, which I'm one of those is people with air fryers. Okay. You know, like people with air fryers just tend to be extra, right? And they just do. I know I'm one of those like we got an air fryer. I got an air fryer slash grill slash. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm hype about the air fryers. And so I'm I'm an evangelist for an air fryer. I don't know how many people have bought air fryers because I've told them about an air fryer. It's the same thing. That is how we tell. That is how we share the gospel. We just say, listen, this air fryer changed my life. (laughs) Let me you need to try it. Listen, Jesus changed my life. You need to try it. Just like that. And that's it. And, and being the fact that it was Super Bowl week, something happened to me um, the day of the Super Bowl that was interesting. And this is post-sermon. This is why I love the deep dives, man. I get to add a little bit more of that. Sometimes there's a lot that happens and I want to capture it. So, so many of you guys know, and especially if you've watched my deep dives on, my, on YouTube long enough, um, I'm always wearing usually a Dolphins hat, all right? If you can kind of tell, all right, this is a... A Bucks. I'm gonna put it on the camera. It's an old Bucks logo. Uh, I bought this hat for Super Bowl Sunday. I wanted to support my wife, and I'm, I'm looking right now at all the dolphin hats that, that I have. I'm sitting right now. This is my office. Okay, uh, I have an office that I built into my have a yes, an office and a desk and shelves built into a closet in my room. And it is colored. The walls are colored in aqua, orange, and white. I'm a diehard Dolphins fan. And so, but my, my wife is a diehard Bucks fan. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to show some love. I'm going to show some love to wifey. I'm going to do something that I normally don't do. So I'm going to buy me a Bucks hat. I'm going to buy me a Bucks shirt. I'm going to rock pewter and red and orange 
for just 24 hours. So I preached in it and, um, you know, I'm still wearing it today. And I was, I was proud. Um, first off, hated the fact that my team wasn't in it, just being real. And her team was, so I was low key jealous. Um, but you know what? That's my wife. And I wanted to hype that up. I wanted that to be an amazing experience. It's the first time that I was with, I'm with her and her team is in the Super Bowl. I wanted it to be special. And cause I know, here's the thing. I know my wife. And if I, if I was prepping for the Super Bowl, because the Miami Dolphins were in the Super Bowl, hopefully 2022. Um, if I knew that they were in the Super Bowl, I know her. She would have been decked out in aqua and orange. She would have gone above and beyond to make that special for me. First, first of all, she's done that. I got pictures of her in Dolphins gear. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to return the favor. It's okay. It's just a game, right? So I put this on. I put my jersey. I put, you know, put my shirt on, right? I put my hat on. I take a video and I just say, hey, you know, Tampa, it was fins up, right, over Pirate's Life. And I post it because I'm a part of a, an official Miami Dolphins, you know, fan club group on Facebook, right? You know, ten, you know, tens of thousands of people in there. And so, of course, I am. And um, I, I, <laughs> I recorded myself and posted in there. I should have probably just left it on the, my Facebook wall and not put it in the Miami Dolphins group. Whatever, I did it. And so I'm like, hey, guys, I'm here. You know, I was like, hey, I'm Tampa, born and raised. I'm repping my city, repping, uh, you know, so I'm supporting my wife out here, you know. But you know what? Always, and I had an old Miami Dolphins pin, and I had it right here on my shirt. I'm like, I'm here, separate, but you know what? Yeah, fins up, always, 100%. Let's just enjoy the game. Let's enjoy the day. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, and I get it. I'm not upset. I'm not shocked. But wow, the amount of heat that came my way, the amount of heat that came my way, cussing me out. But I was like, yo, y'all need to ban this guy. Who, who let this guy, who let this bandwagon imposter Dolphins fan in here? Really? I mean, it's like, yo, I, I've been a Dolphins fan longer than you've been alive, bro. But whatever. And, and all this, I mean, the amount of hate, not a, listen, and, and I would post things in there all the time. Yo, I'm a diehard Dolphins fan, 100%, bleeding, aqua and orange. But you know what? I'm going to support my wife, but still, I'm supporting the Dolphins. Hey, fins up over Pirates Life. Like, I'm literally, there was a lot of people that recognized him. Like, hey, that's real right there, right? That's a true, that's a true fan, and he's supporting his wife. That's good. But it was like, oh, my gosh. It was like 90%. Negative. People were coming at me hard, 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 hard. And uh, and I was thinking, I was like, wow, talking about being a witness. Yo, at first, I actually, I got to admit, I, I kind of got a little salty. I, I kind of went at some of these people because I thought it was just ridiculous and childish on not understanding, not seeing. So I, I kind of wrote some things. Not I ain't cussing anybody out, but I kind of wrote some things very passive aggressively later on, deleted them. Um, but because I was like, I just talked about being a witness about Jesus and I'm all being kind of salty and uh, not being very Jesus like right now. So um Literally after the sermon is ridiculous. And so I go and delete them and I, I put a post on, kind of wrap it up. And uh, I was thinking about that. I'm like, man, look, I want to be, I want to be so diehard for Christ as these guys are diehard for the Dolphins. Just think about that. I mean, these, I mean, there was people insulted that I was putting on different colors. How many of us as believers in Christ, man, we need to just be, we ought to have that same negativity, not treat people negatively, or verbally, but we need to have that same, like that same passion, that same energy on, Hey, you call yourself a believer in Christ. Like when we talk to brothers and sisters, you, 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 you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, but why you got the enemy's Jersey on right now? Right. You, you call yourself a believer in Christ yet you run in place for the enemy. What's the deal? That's it. We're called to rebuke in loving ways. We're called to do that. You know, what's up with that? Like, we're called to do that. And we should, you know, we should. But then it started to make me think, it was like, man, if these people can be this passionate about football, man, that, that's it. It's just being that passionate about Christ. And, and then I started thinking even more. Listen, the Bucks were considered the yucks for a reason. For a long time, the Bucks were considered the yucks, not only because of the, the creamsicle colors and stuff, but they were just a bad team. I mean, even right now in the NFL, I mean, there are some horrible teams and have been bad for years. So, like, yo, the Dolphins haven't won a Super Bowl in like four decades. Five. Oh, my gosh. Um, we haven't been good for a bit. Okay. 
And do you know how many diehard fans out there? I mean, there are some people who are so unashamed. I'm just a better word. There are sports fanatics that are unashamed of their crappy teams. There are sports fanatics that are unashamed of their pathetic franchises that haven't done anything in a long time. They are people who are unashamed of sports teams, okay, that are a laughingstock. If people can be unashamed of that, why would we be unashamed of the gospel, of Christ, of what he has done for us? So that challenged me. And I want to challenge you as well if you're a believer in Christ Jesus. I don't want to guilt. It's not about guilt tripping. I'm just trying to make it easy. Okay. If, if the energy is not there, then ask yourself, why has your heart grown, grown cold? If your heart used to be there, now it's not. You got to ask the Holy Spirit, can you show me what happened? Why has my heart grown cold, gone cold? Or if you've never had that kind of heat and fire and energy, maybe Jesus has just been kind of like a trinket, something that you've done to massage your selfishness and cynicism. What you need is for him to heal you and to forgive you of your sins for the first time and real, for real. And if you're not, I want to tell you, listen, listen. <laughs> it's amazing how some of us, we can be so unashamed of some of the dumbest things. And yet Christ bore your sin and your shame on the cross. He died in a shameful way so that your shame and sin can be washed away. And all you have to do is believe in Christ and say, Jesus, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for dying for, for me. The punishment that I deserve, you took it upon yourself. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. And, for, and I believe that you live again. And so, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and help me live for the first time. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you. Like, when you pray that for the first time, and I encourage you, if you haven't, mean it. Because you're going to find something that is going to be more fulfilling than being a part of anything. Something more fulfilling than the fact that your team wins the Super Bowl. Something more fulfilling than you, you know, making tons of money. Something more fulfilling than you getting that, that hottie and you marrying them. Something more fulfilling than all of that combined. It is being connected and reconnected, really, to the source of true life. Your creator, your heavenly father. There is nothing like it. There is nothing like it. And you should not be ashamed of bearing the name and, and claiming the name of Christ. All right, that's the kind of revolutionaries of Christ, and that's the kind of revolutionaries we need out here. Is some people that are going to rep Christ above all, kingdom over country, kingdom over color, kingdom over culture, kingdom over all, for everybody. All right, be unashamed of that. Be unashamed of that.